All right, the power reducing formulas. Now it says power reducing, but really this is just for sine squared and cosine squared, although you can use them for higher powers, as we'll see in a second. If you had sine cubed, sine cubed would just be sine squared times sine to the first power, and now all of a sudden you can use this to sub in for sine squared and leave sine the way it is. So we can use them for various powers, but the formulas themselves are just these two, with sine squared and cosine squared. There's one for tangent as well, tangent squared, but that's just going to be sine squared over cosine squared, so I don't bother including it here, but that would, um, tan squared would just be 1 minus cosine 2x over 1 plus cosine 2x. And just a, one note about how to remember these two, I just think of it as cosine as being normal, so you'll notice we have a plus sign for cosine, and we have a minus sign for sine. So that's the way I do it, but whatever. I just figure, hey, you know what? Since the formulas have cosine in them, it makes sense that cosine would just lead to cosine. But then since cosine and sine are different, then the one for sine will have the opposite of cosine. You can do it however you want. All right, so um, now I don't normally do this. You know, disclaimer down here, an apology. I don't normally derive formulas, except in those rare instances where it's like very fast for you to derive them yourself on a test or quiz. So even if you got hung up and couldn't remember which one had the plus sign, which one had the minus sign, or whether it's cosine 2x or cosine 4x, whatever, you know, whatever you can't remember about the formula, you can actually just derive it really quickly on the test. So where these come from is this identity, which you should know, uh, which is cosine 2x equals cosine squared x minus sine squared x. I just remind you, this is the double angle formula, and that's why we have 2x here but then x and x. So the whole point of this formula was to be able to reduce things that had 2x and make them just be about x for whatever reason you wanted to you know, and trig, get down to x's instead of 2x's. So that's why it was called the double angle formula. But you can see right here that if you wanted to, you could solve this for cosine squared or sine squared. And that's where those two formulas on the previous page come from. Now one note, we can't go straight to those formulas because, for example, if we tried to solve for cosine squared right now, we'd have a cosine 2x, but we'd also have a sine squared x. So that's why the first step is going to be to convert the other function to, uh, for example, right here we have cosine squares and sine squares. But if we wanted to find the cosine squared formula, let's first convert this thing on the right to being just cosine squares. So we'll have cosine 2x on the left. But then cosine squared will just leave. But recall that sine squared is actually 1 minus cosine squared using the Pythagorean identity. All right, so at this point, we just have cosine. So now we can just sort of simplify and combine like terms. So we'll get distribute this negative sign in, because that can be tricky. So now we got 2 cosine squared and minus 1. All right, so at this point, we've got a cosine squared on one side, in one spot, and cosine 2x on the other. So we can, we're just going to solve for this cosine squared. So we'll add 1 to both sides. So we'll get 1 plus cosine 2x uh, equals 2 cosine squared x. And then to get rid of this 2, we'll just divide both sides by 2. So that cancels that, and divide by 2. So here's that formula we had on the other side. Cosine squared x equals this thing. Now, I'm not saying what I just did was super easy, but if you were on a formula and totally blanked on the cosine squared or sine squared formula, you could figure them out this way, you know, if you had some time to kill. So, that said, let's get to the really fast part, which is actually using this thing. So, the only thing that's confusing is sort of, you know, what do you put here versus there? So, this is cosine, which, remember, is going to have the plus sign, because I figure cosine leads to cosine. They're the same thing. Now the question is what to put here in the parentheses behind cosine. And the answer is double this. So if this is 2x, this gets a 4x. Sine squared 5x, so once again I got 1, only this time it's minus cosine of something over 2. And then since this is a 5x, i got to put double that here, which is 10x. And cosine squared x over 2 looks a little trickier because we've got the over 2. Once again, cosine leads to a positive sign. So it's a cosine of something over 2. And what goes in here is just double this, right? So if you have x over 2, you double that, and you just get x. 
All right, so it's that easy. The power reducing formula, pretty sweet. All right, so now, as, as I said at the outset of this video, we can also use the power reducing formula for higher powers of sine and cosine. So in this case, I've got sine to the fourth. So it wouldn't seem like this applies, except I could just um, make this sine squared times sine squared. So sine squared 4x times sine squared 4x. And by the way, the directions on a problem like this, you know, if you encountered this on calculus or something, you might do this on your own. But if this is a trig problem, you would just say, the instructions would say something like, reduce this to first order trig functions, meaning exponents of 1, you know, no exponents of 2 or higher. So, but the power reducing formula does just that. It reduces the powers of things. So if we reduce sine fourth to sine squared times sine squared, and now we're going to use our formula on each of these separately, and we'll see what happens. All right, so sine squared of something just becomes 1 minus cosine of double that same thing, so 8x over 2. And same story for this guy, right? So 1 minus cosine 8x over 2. All right, so I'll, I'll pull those twos out front, or those halves out front, to make it a little bit easier to work with. So I'll get 1 fourth, and then now I just need to FOIL 1 minus cosine 8x times 1 minus cosine 8x. So that's going to give me 1 minus 2 cosine 8x plus cosine squared 8x. All right, so now we still haven't totally solved the problem because we still have a cosine squared here. This is a good first step. We got 1s and cosine to the first power, which would, you know, would satisfy the directions of having no exponents. The cosine squared we need to convert again. So we're going to have to run the power reducing formula yet again. So first I'm just going to distribute it through this 1 fourth minus 1 half. Because that's just an easy way to make mistakes is if you leave something hanging out front and then you sub in another formula for this. It's like, oh, did I multiply in the 1 fourth or not? I don't remember. So it's worth taking the time to write this step an extra time. So 2 fourths was 1 half and then plus 1 fourth cosine squared 8x. All right, so now we got no more parentheses to worry about. We can sub in. So this term right here, still have this stuff as is. And then we got 1 fourth times cosine squared of 8x is going to be 1 plus cosine of 16x over 2. Because remember, we have to if we have a cosine squared, we have to double the argument here. So 8x goes to 16x, but that allows us to reduce the exponent to 1. All right, so this is going to be 1 fourth cosine 8x plus, now 1 fourth, and then this 2 down here is really just like a 1 half. So that means we've got a 1 eighth. Sort of combine this and get 1 eighth. So 1 eighth times 1 is 1 eighth, and then plus one eighth cosine 16x. So now we've our work is sort of done as far as reducing the exponents, but the last little thing we could do here is combine the one fourth and the one eighth into make them three eighths. So maybe I'll just scribble that out and put a three here because you know what a fan I am of messiness. All right, so that's pretty much it. Power reducing formula. This you'll find this useful every once in a while. Probably it's far enough between times it's useful that you'll forget it again before you need it. So that's why it's helpful to be able to, re to um, derive it from the cosine of 2x formula like I did at the beginning of this video. All right, so stick around. Lots more fun math coming up.